Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a little bit of a continuation from my video that I posted at the end of last week, which was a video titled High Priority Series and basically talked about a lot of the mostly modern fantasy, but just in general kind of fantasy or science fantasy series that I felt like I wanted to get to sooner rather than later. Today I'm going to continue that a little bit and this will be a shorter TBR video, but I'd like to discuss some of the kind of underrated or underhyped fantasy books that I'm hoping to get to sometime this year. This um, I think is like a fairly common video on booktube where people talk about the books that they feel like aren't getting enough recognition or books that they've really enjoyed that they feel like deserve more fans. So I haven't actually read any of these books, but some of them do come from recommendations from other booktubers or just recommendations from friends or somewhere on the internet. I think I am not alone in saying that along with watching a lot of booktube and, and obviously making videos for booktube and reading, I spend a lot of my time just reading about reading. So reading about books, reading book blogs, reading people's lists of, you know, top fantasy or top character driven books or uh, most underrated fantasy. So I and I tend to kind of hoard that information and write it down in various notebooks that I just have strung along inside my house. So I pulled these titles from an ongoing list that I have in one of my book journals that I think is about like 25 titles long. And I just skimmed through that to pull some of the books that I feel like I am most looking forward to reading and that I am most looking forward to sharing with all of you. This is a mixture of some kind of modern or recently published fantasy and some fantasy that was published, um, you know, decades ago. And I will start off with a recommendation uh, that I got from Petrick. So uh, Petrick had recommended that I read Dragon Mage and I put up a review for that. But when I hadn't loved it as much as I'd hoped, he recommended another recently published fantasy book that he felt was very underhyped. And that is Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Lietzau. So this is a book that was just published last year in 2020. And just to give like a general sense of the premise is that we have this ex-mercenary character who's kind of struggling with aspects of his violent past. He, I believe, is suffering from what sounds to be like mood disorders or symptoms of PTSD. And while he's trying to just live his life and kind of live with the things that he's done, he gets dragged into what seems to be a quickly mounting civil war. And his expertise is needed and he is needed to kind of fight or to take a side in this war. And as he gets pulled in, he gets kind of entangled in this mystery surrounding one of the rulers of the world who has been trapped inside his own mind. And I really liked the tagline of this book, which was something to the effect of, if your mind is the enemy, then where do you turn? So what can you trust if you can't trust your own mind? And just based on the work that I do and the interests that I have, this seems like a blend of fantasy and horror and psychological thriller that will really appeal to the things that I like. Um, Patrick has told me that it is very character driven, that a lot of that psychological complexity or nuance is present in the novel, and I have really high hopes that I am going to like this one. The second book on this list is one that was published in 2011, and it's called The Cloud Roads by Martha Wells. So I know Martha Wells is very popular on booktube because of her Murderbot series, which I have not read, but this series that I found while, I think I found it from a Kindle sale. So that's where the source of this one came from, is it's one of those books that I got on like a Kindle daily deal. So I get emails from various, um, websites kind of telling me the Kindle daily deals and I think this is one that I picked up for like a dollar ninety nine and it sounded really cool and I don't even think that I had immediately made the Martha Wells connection until I had seen someone else discussing this on reddit or, or somewhere and that made me even more excited because I know that people really love that murder bot series this book follows a main character named Moon who is a shapeshifter and he's an orphan and doesn't have or has very few memories of his 
time growing up, of his family, of his people. And so he's trying to blend in and kind of stay hidden amongst uh, various tribes of people who live in his world. And I think kind of the inciting action for this novel is that Moon is kind of cast out of his tribe or his adoptive tribe and he is found by someone like him. So for the first time in his life, he finds someone who uh, is the same species as him. And as he goes with this person, he gets pulled into the politics of the world from which he comes. But as he gets kind of pulled f further and further in, he finds out that maybe he is of a caste or of a type of people that are not the most well respected amongst his species and he has to try to kind of navigate who he is where he belongs what his role is in this society and do that while also trying to kind of establish his own identity and understand about his own past I've heard really good things about this book just based on the reviews that I've read on Goodreads and some some kind of blog posts that I've tried to peruse through over the last you know few months or so and I am really looking forward to it but I haven't heard anything about it on booktube specifically so if anybody has read this then please let me know let me know if you liked it disliked it and why or why not the third book that I wanted to put on this kind of underrated TBR is a book that's actually been recommended to me by one of my viewers. So thank you for the recommendation. And I have looked it up and definitely feel like I wanna put it at the forefront of my TBR. And that is a book that was published in 1998 and it's called Heroes Die by Matthew Stover. So this is part of a trilogy, I believe, but it is part of a series. And the first novel is called Heroes Die. And in this novel, there is a blade master or an assassin who's kind of known in his land or known by his people as the Blade of Tyshell. And he is essentially kind of the world's best assassin. He can take out other uh, mercenaries. He has taken out rulers, um, just, people in general and he is kind of ruthless and brutal and as good as you can be as a hired killer. And I think what makes this interesting based on the summaries that I have read is we kind of have our main character who's known as Cain who's on this planet or on this world carrying out these gruesome murders but then back on his home planet of Earth, where he's known by a different alias or by a different name, his exploits are kind of consumed as entertainment. So he is, as I think, as I believe, kind of warring with himself in terms of what he does for a living and the acts that he has carried out when this has gained him kind of fame and notoriety on earth by the people who just consume this as kind of mindless entertainment. And I think the inciting incident in this book is that his estranged wife is captured and so he has to try to figure out who she was captured by and figure out how to rescue her. And as he, he kind of moves further along his quest, he gets embroiled in this kind of cat and mouse game uh, by the two rulers of the two worlds. So it sounds like there's going to be political intrigue. It sounds like it's going to be very action heavy, but it does sound like there is some of that psychological complexity and some of that nuance there. So I am looking forward to this. I think of the books that are on this list, this is probably the one that's the best known. It's certainly the one that has the most reviews on Goodreads. But from what I've heard and from the comments that I have gotten on my videos, it sounds like this one is criminally underrated. So I am really looking forward to giving this a go. Hopefully I'll enjoy it and then be able to continue along with the rest of the series. The next work is a little older and that is the Mabinogian Tetralogy by Evangeline Walton. So this first came onto my radar, I think a couple of years ago, when I was watching an author interview with Christopher Paolini, who wrote The Inheritance Cycle, and more recently, the science fiction novel To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. So whether or not you like Christopher Paolini's work, I think that he is quite obviously a big fantasy fan, and he is really well read in both modern and kind of classic or older fantasy novels. I know that he has cited a bunch of those kind of books from the 1920s as some of his inspirations and some of the books that he felt helped him improve his craft as a writer. 
So this book is a retelling or maybe even just a piecing together of Welsh mythology. So Evangeline Walton uh, wrote this series. I believe she started writing it kind of in the 1930s or 1940s, but as I understand, it wasn't published until later in the 1970s. And what I've heard about this is that it's not always the most cohesive narrative because it is kind of pieced together from these various stories of Welsh, Welsh mythology, but that the writing is beautiful and that she has an excellent command of atmosphere and of setting and, and these stories kind of transport you into those myths. I love mythological retellings. I have read a lot of kind of Greek mythology retellings. I've read a smattering of uh, Norse retellings. And I had recently said in a video that I really wanted to get to know some of the mythologies of different places. And so I am really looking forward to reading this one. I do love beautiful writing. This sounds like it might be one that I have to read a little more slowly and kind of piece by piece, but I haven't heard many people talk about it and I really would like to get into it. The fifth book is one that I saw pop up, I believe in Alan's Discord. Um, Alan from the Library of Alexandria has a great Discord and I love uh, going in there and kind of chatting with people or just reading through the, the chat and kind of existing on the periphery a little bit. But I am almost 100% sure that this book came up in his Discord. And that is The Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. This is a book that was published in 2018, and from what I can tell, it doesn't get a lot of airtime on BookTube. Now, I've only been on BookTube for about the past year, so it's possible that maybe a couple of years ago when this was published, it was talked about a little bit more, but I don't see it pop up on many people's kind of to read lists or introductory lists or anything like that. And it doesn't have many reviews over on Goodreads either. But this book, when I had seen someone mention it in the Discord, I kind of looked it up and thought, that sounds like something that would be right up my alley. It's kind of pitched as classic fantasy, so those tropes that we love from like 70s or 80s fantasy, but told through a modern lens and a modern perspective. So more diverse in terms of characters, in terms of the psychology of the characters and the, I guess the, obstacles that they have to face. So the basic setup for this book is that there is a young boy named Aaron who is kind of living in society and following the rules that he has to follow to the letter. And then one day, kind of unbeknownst to him, um, his family is placed under scrutiny, his dad is executed, and both Aaron and his best friend are thrown into prison work camps where they're, su they're supposed to stay there and kind of work themselves until they die. After this happens, Aaron is rescued by someone who hates him but seems to be oath-bound or duty-bound to him for some reason. When he is rescued, Aaron starts to find out that what he believed about his society or what he believed about his world was untrue. And so many of these rules that were kind of put forth as ways to protect the people or help the people are actually stifling the people or kind of taking away or limiting their freedoms. And so Aaron gets caught up in this mounting revolution and something that the, the, I guess the common people need to move forward with this revolution is a weapon called the Ember Blade, which is essentially like the Excalibur of their people. So Aaron starts to devise a plan to try to steal this blade and the story goes out from there. And like I said, it sounds like this will be a fun mashup of classic fantasy tropes mixed with, mixed with kind of a more modern sensibility. And it sounds really, really fun and like something that I would really like. Again, this is a bit newer. If you have read it, then please let me know because I would love to know. I think it's like a 900 page book. So I would love to know how people feel about it before I invest the time into reading kind of a giant tome of a book. 
The final book on this list of kind of my underrated TBR is the first book in the Lioness trilogy by Jack Vance. And that first book is called Soldren's Gate. So this is a book that was released in kind of the early to mid 1980s, and I believe was fairly well received at the time that it was published, but unfortunately did not gain a big following and seems to have fallen kind of out of print since then. Uh, I expect I'll have to pick this one up on Kindle unless I can find it in a secondhand bookstore, but it's one that gets talked about a lot kind of off booktube as an underrated classic or an underrated gem and the setup and the premise seem to fit the kind of fantasy tropes and the fantasy uh, type of world building that I enjoy in fantasy. So the basic premise of this book is that there's a collection of isles known as the Elder Isles and amongst these isles are kind of 10 warring kingdoms that have various nobilities and they all have various goals and they always seem to be at odds with one another. And the king of one of these kingdoms, the kingdom of Lioness, for which the series is named, is named Casimir. And he's kind of a ruthless and diabolical king, always plotting and planning. And so he, he, he tries to establish an alliance by giving away or promising the hand of his daughter, Soldren. Unfortunately for him, his daughter seems to be just as strong-willed and as obstinate as he is, and she absolutely refuses the marriage. So as a punishment, he locks her in a garden. And while she's in that garden, she meets her, her love, and as it says in the description, tragedy unfolds from there. So it sounds like this, again, is a classic fantasy, has some elements, it sounds like maybe a bit whimsical, a bit fairy tale esque but with all the brutality of those warring kingdoms and that difficult relationship between the father and the daughter. Uh, again, of the people who have read this, they seem to really love it. It unfortunately just does not seem to have a wide audience. I think I will like this one in particular. It appeals to that that classic fairy tale esque kind of nature inspired fantasy that I really enjoy. So, if anybody has read this book or this series, then please let me know because I would love to get into it and see how I feel about it. That is a quick list of six underrated books that I would really like to pick up in the near future. If any of you have read these, then please let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts whether or not you think that they are worth my time or not, which ones you think should shoot to the, to the top of the pile, or which ones sound really interesting that you would like to hear more about or see a review on. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you with another video soon. Bye.